Hello students. Today we are going to discuss third example of extra chromosomal inheritance and that is petite mutants in yeast. Let us revise what we have already done in last two lectures of extra chromosomal inheritance. We learnt that it is also called cytoplasmic inheritance because the traits are controlled by cytoplasmic genes. It is also called maternal inheritance because the traits are majorly controlled by mother genes and it is also called organular inheritance because the traits are controlled by genes which are present in organelles like mitochondria or chloroplast. It was first of all discovered by Corinth and Mirabilis Jalapa and there are examples of extra chromosomal inheritance which includes shell coiling in snail and it is an example of maternal influence or maternal effect then killer and sensitive strain of paramecium, male sterility in plants and petite mutants in yeast. Then in this we have to remember that results of reciprocal crosses show different results because it is an extension of Mendelian inheritance. It does not follow laws of Mendelian inheritance. And we also learned that there are three kinds of extra chromosomal inheritance. First is maternal effects which depends indirectly on nuclear genes and it inv involves no or no cytoplasmic hereditary units. So the example of snail coiling we have already discussed in lecture 2 of extra chromosomal inheritance. Then cytoplasmic inheritance which involves dispensable and infertive hereditary particles and this is an example of paramecium at it includes kappa particles of paramecium which we will discuss in subsequent lecture and the third example is controlled by organelar genes which includes cytoplasmic inheritance involving essential organelar genes like mitochondria and chloroplast so for this we have already discussed the example of Mirabilis jilapa leaf and branch color in first lecture of extra chromosomal inheritance and this also includes male sterility in plants which is controlled by mitochondrial genes and in today's lecture we are going to discuss petite mutants in yeast. So let us discuss what is what are what is petite mutants in yeast. So, petite mutants in yeast, this was discovered by Boris Afrosi. And what are petite mutants? These are mutants which are mutation in mitochondria for aerobic respiration pathway. So, because of this, these mutants are, uh, because they have problem in their respiratory pathway, so these mutants have uh, the colonies which are formed they are smaller compared to the normal ones so the normal colony is called grand colony and the smaller colony is called petite colony so for this uh, for to understand the petite mutants in yeast we have to remember that there is a cytoplasmic factor rho which is involved in this mechanism and the rho factor is involved in making the colonies normal. If it is absent then the, the colonies will be smaller. So this rho factor is present in cytoplasm and this has something to do with mitochondrial genes. Say we, uh, we just assume that rho is um, uh, formed by the mitochondrial genes and if it is absent then there is some problem in 
the respiratory pathway. Now, when we consider petite breathers, so, so um, there are three types of segregation pattern which are observed in petites. The first is segregational, which includes normal Mendelian segregation mutation in nuclear genes. So, we designate them as rho is present or rho positive. So, the petites in this is due to mutation in nuclear genes and not in mitochondrial genes. The second example is of neutral petite and the neutral petites they show non Mendelian segregation. It is due to mutation in mitochondrial genes. In them the rho is absent and so they are called rho zero. And the third is suppressive petite mutants and they also follow non Mendelian segregation and they are designated by rho mutated or no rho negative which have defective rho or are rho minus. So let us understand it with this uh, picture and you can refer PK Gupta and Klagen Cummings for this particular topic. It is nicely explained in P.K. Gupta and Klagen Cummings. So, when what is segregational petite mutants? In segregation, segregational petite mutants say there is a haploid petite and there is a normal uh, yeast. Okay, so haploid petite is smaller colony and normal means normal in size. When they uh, when they hybridize they form a diploid zygote and when this zygote it undergoes sporulation by the process of meiosis then the ascos in ascospores the haploid ascospores are of two kinds two petites and two normal so this is following normal mendelian segregation so we conclude that the mutation is in nuclear genes and not in the mitochondrial genes. The second example is of neutral petites. So, here when the haploid petite uh, hybridizes with the haploid normal and the diploid zygote is formed, after sporulation, the haploid ascospores which are formed, they are all normal. So, what we conclude? that because the cytoplasmic uh, the cytoplasm doesn't have rho and so the normal uh, nuclear genes control it and this is forming all four haploid ascospores and but it is following non mendelian segregation pattern because we expect here half the colonies half the ascospores to be Petites and half the ascospores to be normal, but for here in neutral, what we conclude that the normal uh, normal nuclear genes they control the respiratory pathway, and because of that, all the ascospores which are formed they are normal. Now in the third kind, which is suppressive, in suppressive when the haploid haploid petite uh, hybridizes with the haploid normal because it does not have rho particle so it is designated as rho but in this after the, the diploid zygote is formed and after sporulation process we see that all the uh, spores which are formed they are of small size and they are all petite so how to uh, explain this this we can explain uh, like this because the rho is defective here the rho is present and it is the rho particle which is formed it is present and it is given by the mitochondrial it is formed by the mitochondrial genes mutated mitochondrial genes but this rho dominates the normal rho and so it uh, divides very fast and it it dominates and so the all the spores which are formed they are of smaller size 
so how to what we have understood from this picture we will just read the text from Klagen. For this text, please refer P.K. Gupta and Klagen Cummings. The text says, two major hypotheses that center around the organelar DNA have been advanced to explain suppressiveness. So they are talking about the third mechanism where all uh, petite spores are formed or all petite colonies are formed where the mutated gene of mitochondria overtakes the dominant normal mitochondrial nuclear gene. One explanation suggests that mutant DNA in mitochondria replicates more rapidly resulting in the mutant mitochondria taking over or dominating the phenotype by numbers alone. Uh, and the second explanation suggests that recombination occurs between the mutant and wild type mitochondria in zygote and it introduces errors or disrupts the normal mitochondria. So that they have explained it via two mechanisms. The two mechanisms here explained they are they are for the third uh, subpetite or suppressor petites. But it is not clear which one, if either these explanations is correct. So these are the two mechanisms which have been given in books to understand pitite, third mechanism, which is giving rise to only the pitite colonies. I hope this topic is clear to you and you can refer these books and let us meet in next video lecture. Thank you.